All right, so we got the Venus and Leo at the moment, where the Venus loves to basically be at and Leo. But Leo don't like to be in Venus, so it's full. So you may basically put yourself into a location of, in, a, in detriment of falling for love, falling for something, where it may not basically be appearing that way. And the thing is, when you fall, when you fall in this perspective, <clears throat> when Venus is done shaking things up, shaping things up and waxing things out, and realize Venus is going to make us fall in the Virgo after this um, phase of Venus being in Leo at the moment. So, you know, it's good to, you know, brighten things up and express things, but don't put all your heart and um, and all your eggs in one basket because that's going to put you into the situation of being put into the stuck in, the second place. And when you get put into the second place, you get so deep into that area and location that it kind of like, you know, Harness you and put you into a location and area that you don't want to basically be in or belong at. <clears throat> now, what's going to oppose you and what's going to kind of like, you know, balance things out is going to be wherever you got Aquarius at in your charts. So, it's in Saturn at the moment. So, you're going to basically be getting hit with some harsh realities when it comes to Venus being in Leo at the moment. Feel me? That means you got to blend it to blend it up a little bit. This way, you know, you will be balanced and you won't be in a situation of putting all the weight on one scale and the other scale is going to kind of like be bouncing up and down and you're going to realize that you need a little bit more help on this end to balance and even things out this way you won't put yourself into a situation of losing yourself <clears throat> sometimes you got to lose yourself to find yourself because if you don't find yourself nobody gonna find them find you for them feel me you need to find yourself first then once you do that you could basically be able to move on <clears throat> and retract but it's all about truth first you put yourself first and get your shit together. Everything gonna basically go accordingly and smooth. And you know, we just had this full moon too. That means the Venus is gonna actually be opposing the moon as well. And also the sun is gonna be opposing the moon. Venus, our love language is also gonna be getting opposed by Saturn at the moment too. So yeah, they hold out of oppositions, hold out of obstacles. But you know, oppositions and squares is actually, you know, a learning process and a phase that you need to go through. This way you won't basically make these mistakes. This way, you know, you will shape and form it the right way and you will construct things in the right way. But, you know, Saturn is kind of actually, you know, want us to structure things and, you know, build upon these things and not actually, you know, just look at things in one way. Because you can have all the expression, you can have all the creativity, fun and enjoyment. <clears throat> but Saturn wants you to, you know, collaborate, relate. And, of course, you know, bring some form of, you know, commitment where you can kind of like, you know, put shine on that area and bring the two together. This way things can be narrow narrated and things won't be out of proportion or out of place so you'll be basically aligning yourself up properly to this way things can kind of like connect like the dots like connect. now venus and leo want you to value love appreciate and get a little bit of lustful when it comes to your expressions your creativity your fun your enjoyment they want you to spice things up they don't want things to be dry they want things to be you know fixed fire so you want to be having a fixated way of feeling and seeing about your expressions your creativity your fun your entertainment your enjoyment and then of course your hobbies. I want you to brighten that up. I want you to add some fuel, some light to it. And of course, you have this in your house. You have a Leo. Everybody got Leo in their charts <clears throat> in a certain house. You don't have it there. Then that means you pretty much, you know, did some accomplishments when it comes to, you know, love and attention. And sometimes you probably like came into this world. You ain't really care too much about that. But at the end of the day, you know, you still got to utilize that. And of course, how you going to utilize that is harnessing these energies. So wherever you got Venus adding your charts in the houses, these are going to be the placements where you need to go and, of course, push move forward express yourself and be big hearted but also don't lose your big ass heart expressing too much or putting too much out there because your ass gonna get sunk it's gonna get taken away by the other side saturn, uh, saturn in the curtain gonna get you know what i'm saying it's gonna get concealed in the area where you need to pretty much always also realize leo is about self so you need to get self-centered make sure you're um make sure you're center centering yourself as the sun doing the 360 make sure you're centering yourself and expressing things and looking at and having a 360 perspective which means you can pretty much, you know, spice things up because everything the Venus is going to be doing is alignments because everything is going to be rotating. So you want to make sure you're rotating, doing your 360. And of course, it ain't just one planet, but it's multiple planets that you got to like actually start to face and put out the blueprint when you when you come, of course, putting out the platform and going, of course, moving forward, pushing, moving, pushing forward. So it's all about your um, intent. <clears throat> it's all about having intent when it comes to you getting these energies. That's in the sky. And you got to play out these energies with this and within the sky as above as below as within as without remember what goes in what comes out what goes up what comes down so it's all about you it's all about the merry-go-round it's all about you going ring around the rosy 
You know I mean? So you want to make sure you're utilizing your ring around the rosy, your um, your solar plexus, your expressions, your sun, your actions, what you're paying attention to. You want to add that, sparse that up, spice it up. And you know, you want to um, push that out. You want that to be seen. You want that to be expressive. So certain houses Leo may not do good in, certain houses Leo are going to do good in. But at the end of the day, you're going to have some areas where you're going to need where you need to get on stage and express yourself. You're going to have some areas where you need to kind of like conceal things, aka work on your inside. So this way when the constellation moves into another constellation in perspective, you'll be able to actually have the right concealment. It's all about a um, percentage thing. You kind of like lose yourself during this time. So don't lose yourself. You need to check yourself before you collect yourself. And you always want to make sure you check yourself. So you won't basically be getting checked by someone or something else. For me. You want to make sure you check yourself. You want to make sure you take care of your priorities. For me, charity start at home. So, of course, everything starts with the home space. And of course, you push that out. You express that. You put that out there on the paint wall. You marinate that out. Now, if you have a Venus and Leo in your first house, by default, you're going to go to the extreme when it comes to your personality, your personal expressions, your personal creativity, your personal fun and entertainment and enjoyment. And you're going to be basically putting a whole lot of Big energy, a big whole lot of big light on that area, that focus, that viewpoint. Your focus, your viewpoint is pretty much need to be focused on yourself right now. I mean, by the fault, you're dealing with a conjunction at the moment. You're going to have all the power. You're going to have all the expressions inside. You can be very big hearted when it comes to your, your first house. Your love matters. Your, the people that's in your love distances, the people that's in your love personal space. You need to get your personal space sparked up. You need to go, of course, get those juices flowing, get them things running and going. But also, remember, you need to put some boundaries and limitations and restrictions. And, you know, you need to correlate a little bit more with your seventh house. This way you can have, you know, your oppositions coming together and colliding together in the right spectrums. And this way everything will basically be wonderful and grounded. This way you'll be moving forward with your um, Virgo being in your eighth house. Be kind of like pushing forward and not having no um, circumstances or situations of dealing with catastrophic events. Everything will basically be moving accordingly. Everything will basically be flowing accordingly. And everything will start, you know, go in your favor. Now, if you got to see a second house, you need to go ahead and, of course, the things that you hold, the things that you value, the things that you appreciate, love and desire, and the things that you are very touchy and grounded towards, too, you need to spark some light <clears throat> and some intention and some expression towards your resources, your material, your safety, your security, your maternal, your home space. You need to go, of course, put some light in that area, spark that up, get that, get those juices flowing and going in that area, in that perspective. Now, the um, opposition is going to come from your eighth house, things that's private and hidden and deep underneath the surface so be aware of that make sure that you know make sure you're creating that balance in, in that location and don't express too much don't value too much because um saturn occurs in the eighth house it's gonna kind of like retract you a little bit okay but you're, you're expressing too much you're giving too much you're valuing too much but you're not valuing yourself you're not valuing in, your internal life now saturn occurs eighth house will transform your second house if you're not um you know balancing shit out i mean venus is all about balance pleasure and desires but you always gotta balance things out it's capricorn I mean, Saturn is exalted in that, in that planet as well, so don't be aware of that. Now, if you got this in your um, third house, you need to, come, of course, express your mind, your creativity, your fun, your entertainment, enjoyment. You need to think, communicate about that, share about those ideas. But also, you need to also look at the bigger picture with Saturn and the curse in your ninth house. Take those ideas. All right, so we had a Sagittarius hours. My phone was overheated. So this had, I, as soon as I got to the third house, that was the opposition right there. And I'm a Gemini ascendant. We had Sagittarius hours. So my seventh house was opposing my first house. So now I'm back to the third house. So when it comes to the third house, you need to um, express your mind, your thoughts, your creative endeavors, and your environment, you know, express yourself, but also look at the bigger picture and expand with that. This way you won't be stagnant in that area. And of course, you'll be able to have a home to build with. Now, if you got Venus and Leo in your fourth house, this is going to put you into an endeavorment of shining a light on home, family, privacy, or creating a home, or creating a new home in the family during this time. Now, Saturn and Aquarius in the 10th house is going to restrict you and put certain boundaries and limitations towards your um your fun and your enjoyment, dealing with home and family. It's one thing to have a home and a family, to have some form of creativity, the fun and enjoyment, but you also got to set boundaries and limitations and restrictions in that area as well for me. Cause if they get too loose, loose group, they may basically, you know, go against certain restrictions and think they can do whatever. Sometimes you got to put um some chores around the home with the family. Chores first, business first, fun and entertainment last. If you got to see your fifth house, you're going to have all the power and control by default to express yourself when it comes to your romance, your activities, your fun and entertainment, enjoyment, your education. I mean, yeah, your education as well, too. You know, you're going to place yourself into a situation of learning. Now, what's going to oppose you is going to be your 11th house. 
They're going to go through some circumstances, situations of opposition to dealing with your groups, acquaintances, and friends. I mean, it's one thing to have, you know, it's one thing to be self-centered and have all the power in your hands. But you also need to um, be considerate and also bring a little bit of associations in between, you know, have a balance in there so you can just have something to associate yourself with. <clears throat> because if you just, if you were just focused on your fifth house, and of course you ain't going to have no one else come, you know, shine light or come across in that area. But you need to um, express, you need to put some form of creativity, some self-expressions, and also express that towards your 11th house a little bit too. That's where you can be balanced in that area. Now, if you got to see a 6th house, Venus falls in this house. But being that Leo is here, it's going to, you know, you need to bring some fun, entertainment, enjoyment towards your work, health, routine, or wherever you work at your 9 to 5. You need to spark some entertainment and some funness in that area. Don't just be too dry in that area. Leo wants you to, you know, bring some creativity and also... Saturn, Saturn Aquarius in your 12th house, I want you to bring some form of dreams in that area. This way you ain't too just all work and no play and a little bit of expression, but you need to have a dream and a purpose so shit can lighten up and brighten up. Now, if you got to see your 7th house, you need to put some form of entertainment and enjoyment towards your relationships and the way you relate towards others. For me, everything got to be some form of fun, entertainment, and enjoyment, but also don't lose yourself because you need to focus on yourself. Saturn and Aquarius in your first house. You know, also focus on yourself sometimes. Don't give all your all to other relationships and relating to others. And you ain't gonna have you won't have shit or a pot to piss in because you and everybody else's shit pissing in their shit. So you wanna make sure you balance that area. Eighth house, you need to express yourself deeply in the bed. Bring some bring some new positions, some new expressions, some new deep desires and be very private and hidden with these things. But also don't be too private and hidden. You gotta come surface of it because of whatever you hold in won't be expressed and nobody won't know it if you don't come to utilize your second house around with these things. Come up with the surface with these things. Don't be so deep all the things in because you can transform yourself. I mean, it's great. It go through a lot of conflicts in this area. As well. <laughs> now, Venus and Leo uh, in the ninth house, I want you to um, look at the bigger picture and express yourself. Express that big picture. Look at the um, horizons of how you can express yourself when it comes to your certain horizons, certain philosophies, certain beliefs. I want you to expand above your horizons, express that a little bit, you know. But also, always remember, what goes up must come down. So when you go up, when you come to your ninth house, expressing yourself up there, you need to come back down towards your environment, your surroundings, and express what you learned when you was up there. I mean, it's one thing to be up there, but you got to come down sometime. Everything going to fall, everything going to go up, for me. So you got to you gonna have your ups and downs, but don't go too high. So your Saturn occurs, it's going to put some boundaries, limitations, and restrictions, and of course, balance you and bring your ass down. Within your environment, your surroundings, your siblings, your neighbors, and express a little bit of that ninth house. So they can also be able to actually, you know, bring the faith, hope, and belief within that environment, that correspondence. Now, if you got to your tenth house, you need to go ahead and, of course, express yourself. When it comes to your status, your goals, your reputations, your duties, your obligations, spark that up. Put some fire and some spice up your status, your career, your goals, drawing this down for me. Add that fire, add that fuel, be fixated, have it, be determined about it, and express that shit. Now, always remember, it's one thing to express that status, that career, that goal. But you also got to also, that status, that goal, what comes with a whole lot of responsibilities. You got to have some fun with it, for me. You can't just be a workaholic, express yourself. You got to have a home, a family, something that you can ground on, for me. Someone, you know, you got the big bag and shit. You want to spend and share that money. You can't take all the money to the grave with you. You want to share something with the home and family. Bring balance in that area. Don't be all working up late. And 11th house. You need to express yourself when it comes to your associations, your groups, your acquaintances, your fantasies, and things of that matter, too, feel me? There's one thing to be hanging with the gang and shit, but you got to hang with your girl, too. Um, fifth house, Saturn, the Christian, fifth house. Your girl wants you to be romantic for her. Your girl wants you to be loving for her. You can't just be with the guys, always with the blunt, passing the drink and all that. You got to come with your girl, too. You got to express, you got to get romantic with your girl, too, feel me? So add balance between that. So we'll bring your girls with the guys sometimes, but don't. If you don't cross certain boundaries, then there we go. Keep things very light and limited. And last but not least, we got Leo <clears throat> talk about. You need to go ahead and, of course, express your dreams, your fantasies, your illusions, your creativity, your imagination for me. Do this behind closed doors. But don't also forget, it's one thing to express yourself behind closed doors, but you're going to have, you have a sixth house to relate to. So you need to relate those dreams in your sixth house. Your dreams, your fantasies, your imagination, your creativity, your talents, your enjoyment. Express that towards your work, your health, your routine, the people that you deal with on a day to day basis, and express that. Come down a little bit. Don't be too closed in. <clears throat> you gotta put that into practicality. You gotta put that into the analytic perspective. And you gotta basically marinate it and, of course, make it a